As Western Australia's hard border falls for the first time in nearly 700 days, Premier Mark McGowan says he cannot guarantee it is gone for good. Key points. WA Premier Mark McGowan says he cannot rule out the possibility of reinstating a hard border in the future. WA Premier Mark McGowan says he cannot rule out the possibility of reinstating a hard border in the future the state had been closed off to the rest of the country for 697 days. The state had been closed off to the rest of the country for 697 days epidemiologist Catherine Bennett says hard borders were now redundant as states move beyond COVID-0. With a double-dose vaccination rate of 96.5% and the third dose rate at 64.6%, Mr McGowan said the state was well prepared. But he told 7.30 he could not rule out the border being used again for pandemic management in the future. It's been done before, back in the Spanish influenza, Mr McGowan said. If there is another pandemic, the High Court has ruled that these things are available and they work. Every state in Australia did it. We all did it at various points in time. The media seems to focus most of all on Western Australia, for some reason. But every state in Australia did it. Mr McGowan said he thought it was unlikely hard borders would be needed again during the current pandemic, but would not rule that out either. I think it is unlikely, but I can't rule it out if some ultralight variant comes along and we want to save lives. I can't rule it out," he said. WA's soft landing achieved. Catherine Bennett, the chair in epidemiology at Deakin University, said WA's border restrictions had become redundant and it would be very unlikely any state would need to reinstate border restrictions. It is likely the last of it in the current pandemic, she said. It is now redundant as we move beyond COVID-0. It would only be a last resort if we had a particular variant of concern and were sure that it was only in one part of the country that you might mount an argument to restrict movement domestically, in order to contain and manage locally. Catherine Bennett says it's unlikely any state would need to reintroduce border restrictions. Peter Drought Professor Bennett said WA's Premier would likely achieve the soft landing out of the pandemic he had been aiming for. We already saw how holding back Omicron by a couple of weeks in South Australia and Tasmania, allowing them to get the boosters that bit higher, both helped dampen the peak and saw fewer in hospital also, she said. WA Premier Mark McGowan acknowledges the border closure has been tough on families. Cass and Ho Reflecting on the past two years since the border went up, Mr McGowan said he could not think of much he would have done differently. We put in place measures that protected the state, Mr McGowan said. We have had two people acquire the virus and pass away here. We've had the strongest economic outcomes of any state in Australia and probably any state in the world. And we've had the best health outcomes of anywhere in the world. Admittedly, at times, it has been difficult for people. And some people have missed out on family reunions and the like. But our border has worked. All of the other measures we put in place have worked. But the border has also come at a great cost to many people. All we wanted was to go and be with our son. The Melbourne-based family of Jordan Grace, a 20-year-old rugby player who died in Perth in November, was unable to fly to Perth and identify him straight away. If you or anyone you know needs help, Lifeline on 13 11 14. Lifeline on 13 11 14 Beyond Blue on 1300224636. Beyond Blue on 1300224636 Suicide Callback Service on 1300659467. Suicide Callback Service on 1300659467 Headspace on 1800650890. Headspace on 1800650890 reach out at au.reachout. Steve and Katie Grace, who were both vaccinated, wanted to fly to Perth to collect Jordan's body and his belongings after they found out he had taken his own life. Victoria was classified as an extreme risk at the time, 
which meant any travelers approved under a compassionate exemption would still be required to quarantine for two weeks. But with a funeral to organize and their other children in Melbourne, they felt two weeks of quarantine was not an option and they declined. All we wanted was to go and be with our son, go and grab all of his things and bring him home with us, Mr. Grace said. And start that grieving process. Because if you can't start that process, the grieving becomes two, threefold. Steve Grace's son Jordan, a talented rugby player, took his own life in November. Supplied. Mr. Grace said he wondered whether his son, who died a couple of days before his 21st birthday, might still be alive if the hard border had not existed and Jordan's family had been able to see him. If he had been home a few times, maybe things would have been different, he said. If we were able to fly over there for his 21st and spend time with him things might have been different. Knowing that he might have been home with us for Christmas. It might have changed things, you know. Jordan's family says he struggled with the isolation in Perth. Supplied. Jordan's 19-year-old sister Isabella and her mother Katie answered the door the night police came with the news of his death. She said the border restrictions made an awful situation much more difficult. All we wanted was to have him back here, Isabella said. You would think in this situation that you couldn't need any more compassion. Mr. McGowan said he felt that authorities had treated people compassionately throughout the course of the hard border. There's been lots of cases where the authorities work with families to try and resolve issues when they arise and try and make sure we do what we can to assist them in those often very difficult and terrible situations, he said. We have a team of people that work very hard, both police and health, that have managed hundreds if not thousands of those compassionate exemption cases over the course of the last two years. You've got to remember the alternative was there have been many thousands of people die in New South Wales and Victoria. That was what we were trying to protect ourselves against. I'm sorry to anyone who has suffered over the course of the last two years. It hasn't been pleasant. It has been a difficult time for everyone. And making these decisions was not something I ever expected I would be put in that position to make. But I did the best I could. Watch this story on 7.30 tonight on ABC TV and ABC iView. M to mute, left and right arrows to seek, up and down arrows for volume. Watch 16 minutes 12 seconds 16 M how and when will the COVID pandemic end?